Pakistan American Congress held its 19th annual US Pakistan Friendship Day conference at the Capitol Hill on June 21st. The theme for this year's conference was the state of US Pakistan relations. The relations have remained very tense ever since the Osama bin Laden operation in Abbottabad and the officials of both countries are particularly tight-lipped and that is because of the fluid nature of the ground reality and the unfolding Afghan reconciliation process. In addition to other delegates at the conference, I presented my views and analysis on the state of US-Pakistan relations. More often uh, seem to dwell in the past, uh, we, we spend a lot of time in the present, what, but we are not making sense of how it relates to the future, because again, future is the most important state. Uh, Every individual and country is always trying to adapt to change. Uh, there is change happening in our environment. Personally, there is always change happening. Uh, and, and trying to ascertain, most importantly, what is that change? Because if we are to respond to it, we have to first recognize what that change is. And in that context, in the, in the context of the discussion that is taking place today, uh, there is a global change, there is a global change in the balance of power. I mean, speaking from the context of what Polytech does. If there is, and whenever there was change of global balance of powers, there is great flux. And obviously Pakistan is facing great flux in, in Pakistan and around the region as well. Uh, somebody mentioned that Pakistan should not be taking the limelight or get his head on the chopping block, or block. Uh, and it's, it seems like uh, as, as things are unfolding today, it may not be possible with the whole world focused on Pakistan. I don't know how they're going to do that. And with Osama being discovered in Abbottabad, that's, I think, out of the question now. They have to deal with that in, in one way or the other. Uh, but the point being, what is that change? Uh, we just saw this year the whole Middle East imploding. We, we, we've seen the Arab Spring going from one country to the other. We, we're seeing the nation-state classification diminishing in the Middle East, literally. Uh, we saw Libya, we, we're seeing Yemen. Uh, increasingly, there is Syria, and who knows where it's going next. From our point of view, uh, the, it's happening because of the disconnect between the people and the rulers. Of course, Middle East is represented by the monarchs or autocratic governments. Uh, but most of the interviews we've been conducting with some important opinion makers in Pakistan and in U.S., I'm talking about Pakistani Americans, uh, when we pose this question to them that uh, what is the implication of the Arab Springs to Pakistan? And the answer is that we've had many Arab Springs. And the most <coughs> recent being the, the restoration of the Chief Justice of Pakistan. Uh, if we were to add our insight to it, yes, uh, there was, but as, is, as it stands today, there is a great divide between what the public is saying and what the rulers are presenting. They're saying it's a democratic government, but democratic government has to represent the views of the society. But that's not just, uh, that's one part of it. They have to uh, shape those views as well. That's what leadership is. They, they provide leadership, they guide uh, to find a way out of change. Uh, the, the Jinnah's views were presented today. Uh, obviously, PARS is the best example to provide uh, some uh, framework to how to deal with the future. And this is the purpose of history. History is supposed to be our uh, most important uh, tool to figure out what, how past leaders dealt with change of their time and provided direction for the future. In synthesizing the views of the members of Congress, Polytech has tried to ascertain the present state of U.S.-Pakistan relations, the role the Pakistani-American community should play according to the members of Congress, and the future of U.S.-Pakistan relations. It's worth pointing out these are difficult times between Pakistan and the United States. Um, many of us are, 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 are puzzled by, by some pretty clear indications that there are some in Pakistan who have been reluctant to help us uh, 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 really bring an end to Al-Qaeda. 
the cooperation between our governments, our militaries, and our law enforcement agencies. Uh, ultimately, to uh, reverse current trends in the relationship, we need to redouble our cooperative efforts in defeating Al-Qaeda, defeating Al-Qaeda supporters, supporting a stable and independent Afghanistan, and helping to ensure a democratic and prosperous future for Pakistan and its 180 million people. Now, as chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, I look forward to working with informed and uh, committed citizens like you and folks who belong to the Pakistani American Congress, a long-standing institution, to pursue what I hope will be a lasting friendship with Pakistan based on a foundation of mutual interest and mutual respect. One that I think will create enduring linkages between our two peoples and uh, with stronger ties, with trade, investment opportunities, and the attendant benefits for the people of Pakistan and indeed throughout the entire region. It's tricky when you have a strong uh, feeling about the country of origin. I come from the Greek community, and we're managing a difficult time now in terms of what Greece is facing, how members of the Greek community in the United States should respond to the crisis in Greece, how to manage some of the, uh, the comments that come uh, to uh, our community. Uh, we've, we've had a history of, of times where we had to manage dynamics uh, between uh, rel relative to the relationship between the United States, the official United States government, um, and Greece during 1967 to 1974 when there was a junta, Greece um, during the, the time of Andreas Papandreou, who was very anti-American in his sentiment and his comments. And so to, how do you manage all of that? So that can be tricky to do. Uh, what I do want to say is as that's all being navigated, and I think as American policymakers uh, have to be very careful in terms of next steps in our relationship with Pakistan. Uh, to make sure that we do together the right thing for both. Um, I can say that I have such tremendous respect for the community here. And you found a way to uh, pursue and achieve individual excellence in terms of the Pakistani community in this country. And you look at the fields of endeavor in which Pakistani Americans have succeeded, and you find them in all fields, in business, and law, and medicine, and so forth. Uh, you've worked very hard to make sure you preserve the identity of your own community, but you've also contributed to the broader society. And I will, you know, we, as you know, there have been some uh, interesting debates about um, Pakistan and our relationship with Pakistan and the, uh, the president and the military going after bin Laden uh, in Pakistan was a, um, a good thing to go and get him uh, from the point of view of uh, all Americans and I think for uh, freedom loving uh, people everywhere. Yeah. So I know you agree with me on that. But there's our, um, our friend and our ally. And so there are issues to work out as we will, we will do that. Um, there's been some discussion about uh, aid to Pakistan and whether we should withdraw aid, whether we should um, create other conditions. Um, I continue to say that we should continue aid The members of Pakistan. Congress attending the event pointed to the U-Pakistan-American community that they should help in facilitating the betterment of U.S.-Pakistan relations. Furthermore, they pointed to the seriousness of the tense relations between the two countries and, and pointed out that it should not be allowed to deteriorate any further because that would have serious consequences for both countries. Visible in their comments was a persistent concern regarding the loyalty and role of Pakistani-American community.
It should be noted that there exist serious divisions within the Pakistani-American community on the drone attacks U.S. conducts, which are seen by some as a violation of country's sovereignty. It should also be noted that this divergence in the position of the community mimics the divisiveness that is complicating the Pakistan's domestic politics. There is a serious concern in U.S. regarding the growing anti-Americanism in Pakistan. These perhaps are the worries that cause the representatives to remind the community about where its loyalty should be. The statements from the members of Congress also suggest they are preparing the community for further worsening of relations between U.S. and Pakistan.